Dzień dobry, witamy widzów kanału Spożywcza TV, a także portali Hurt i Detal.pl, Wiadomości Spożywcze.pl i Agronomist.pl i zapraszamy na program Gabinet Spożywczy. Ja się nazywam Wojciech Szeląg, jest ze mną pan Michał Siwek, dyrektor Departamentu International Food and Agri Hub w banku BNP Paribas. Dzień dobry państwu. A naszym i państwa gościem jest pan Igor Tichonow, prezes zarządu kompanii piwowarskiej SA. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry państwu. The company has not only been able to adapt uh, to difficult economic conditions, but has also shown a dynamic sales and financial performance. How this situation evolved over the years? Well, thanks for the question. It's a difficult one. Um, as we all remember, 2019 was the last normal year, right? And then 2020 and 2021 have been hit heavily by COVID. And uh, at the end of the 21, we already seen the increase of prices for aluminium, for some raw materials, even before this uh, current uh, Ukrainian crisis. And if I answer to you in short, Basically, the company was focused on premiumization through portfolio activities, and at the same time, we've been controlling the cost base very rigorously. So it's the recipe of two ingredients. But if I go broader, our company deployed the strategy, which was uh, based on four pillars. It's planet, people, portfolio, and profit. And every element of this 4P has its own meaning. And if I speak for the planet pillar, um, Kampania Vivovarska historically have been quite uh, environmentally focused, right? Uh, our water usage and water consumption is quite low. And in a recent year, we started to focus on CO2 emissions quite uh, deliberately. Uh, you may have heard that um, at the end of 2019, we signed the uh, virtual power purchase agreement with Energy that time. And now, uh, over the last couple of years, 100% of all electric energy we buy, it's going through sustainable, sustainable sources um, uh, from the farm in, at Novi Sviat. So it's, it's a great um, instrument for us to reduce CO2 emissions in all our breweries. So our CO2 emissions dropped for 66% versus prior period. It's massive. At the same time, we're continuing actually our activities to even reduce CO2 emissions for transportation, because for beer, transportation means a lot, you can imagine hundreds of trucks running like every day. And if some of our partners like Eurocash, we organized optimization scheme with that we limiting number of trucks and minimizing the trip time. So and also helped us to reduce CO2 emissions for another 6%. So we're looking at CO2 as being one of the big issues. So then moving into uh, people agenda. Um, again, people are our main, main assets and we want to stay competitive and we carry a lot of responsibility, especially in difficult years. And we think about ourselves as being responsible employer, it's very important for us to retain the jobs for people in the crisis situation and the difficult situation. And second comes the health and safety, because obviously during COVID time we've been putting all these kind of measures to make sure that our employees are less exposed to this COVID infection, right? And at the same time, we've we'll been not only focused on ourselves internally, but we were also supporting the um, clinics in Bialystok, in Poznań and in Tichy. And we donated about 1.3 million Polish Loty to ensure that those clinics, they do have necessary materials to treat the uh, patients in, 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 in the cities. So, and continuing on our internal agenda, speaking of uh, people pillar, uh, we provided about 13,000 trainings uh, during, during the year, which is like four trainings a year per person, uh, including online and classrooms. And we're also part of International Lead Association. It's a new initiative to support leaders supporting um, advancing diversity. So diversity and inclusion is also quite a big part of our initiatives. We want to promote um, uh, gender diversity and we want to promote inclusive culture inside the organization. Then moving to portfolio strategy. Well, arguably, Kampanya Pivovarska among all the brewers have the best brands. You're not surprised to hear it from, from the president of the company, but it's true. Um, I'm particularly proud of brands like uh, Tiski, which is going to be celebrating 400th anniversary in a few years from now. 400, imagine. Then we've got Zubr, and this is the brand which has a lot of connections to uh, environmental agenda as well. Uh, with Zubr particularly, we are sponsoring the Belaveja Foundation, and uh, I, I may mispronounce it, it's Zeb. Uh, another foundation which actually in charge of uh, biodiversity in the region. And with our help, uh, those foundations have been able to extend the land piece for the um, uh, preservation of uh, Zubr. 
which is great addition to um, our environmental topics. So, and then obviously Lech, uh, it's the Velkopolsky brand from coming from Poznan, which have a lot of uh, equity and power. And obviously in portfolio agenda, we've been focused mostly promoting the brands which, uh, in the segment which are growing, right? Which have more potential to grow. And it's a premium, uh, premium brands and also the modern uh, drinks like uh, flavored and non-alcoholic beers. And a final one, profit. And obviously profit comes as a sum of those activities which we are undertaking in, in people and portfolio and even planet part. And obviously in the last couple of years, we've been uh, rigorously controlling our, our expenses, looking at um, you know, minimizing unnecessary marketing spend and obviously big outdoor events like sport events and um, even music festival have been canceled, unfortunately, right? And Horeca have been suffering as a result of closures. And we were able to optimize our spend in some promotional activities and uh, some marketing support. So a combination of that have helped us actually to deliver the financial results, which were not worse than the peak, which we achieved back to 2019. That, that is the recipe. You said about 4P. In fact, in Polish conditions, it's 5 because Pivo beer <laughs> also starts with P. Yes. So maybe it's not coincidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyhow, sir, the, the beer market in Poland seems to be major. What are the developments of the key segments of Compania Pivovarska brands and which segments have recorded the highest uh, growth dynamics? Well, you're absolutely right. Um, <coughs> uh, the beer market in Poland have become mature already like quite a few years by now. And uh, if we look at um, a recent PARPA report, um, actually first time back to 21, I think they recorded the reduction of uh, beer consumption per capita, which was quite significant. It moved down from 99 liters per head back to, uh, I think it was 2018 to 94, which is five liter per head reduction, which is quite, quite visible, right? Which tells us about the impact of COVID and also social demographical changes which Poland is going through. Um, and that's obviously worry, and it's the uh, obviously strong sign for not just for our company, but the whole industry to develop new propositions, new liquids, um, new brands uh, to make sure that the consumers, the modern consumers, the younger consumers are actually staying in the category of finding the, the product which is keeping them attractive. And speaking of um, different segments, unfortunately, the big part of uh, Polish market, uh, which is represented by lagers, have been under pressure and have been uh, reducing. Though the premium part of lagers, specifically uh, driven by international brands, have been growing. And in our case, we've noticed quite a good growth, quite significant growth of um, our um, corporate brand Velkopopovetsky Kozel, which came from Czech Republic and successfully growing in Poland. At the same time, new proposition, new flavored beers like Captain Jack, a funky stuff for, for parties have been growing very nicely, double digit strong, double digit growth. While at the same time, we've noticed that brands like Zuber have been able to retain its um, shoppers and consumers despite a difficult time. So it's a careful selection of sub-segments and some of them have been growing nicely. Uh, what about non-alcoholic beers? Uh, we can see that uh, consumption of them is uh, bigger and bigger each year. Uh, how do you deal with that in Compania Pivovarska? Um, I'm very pleased and it's part of uh, our agenda, it's part of our company and Asahi group agenda actually to promote the non-alcoholic or low alcoholic beverages, right? Because we believe it's, it's a future, it's a future of the category. The segment uh, have been developing in Poland um, for long, for many years, right? But uh, over last, I would say, three years, we've seen the rapid growth of non-alcoholic beers, and it's driven by competition. So that's the time when we can say competition is good, right? Competition forces all the players in the category to come with new products, and bring new flavors, uh, new liquids, new brands, and we've noticed quite substantial growth back to. Uh, 2020-21. Unfortunately, in 21, the growth rate for non-alcoholic drinks reduced a bit. Uh, maybe it's partially because of the COVID, maybe it's partially because the summer was not so hot, and we believe there is a still potential in this segment. At the moment, non-alcoholic beers in Poland represent around 5-6% to 6 of total market, and uh, in some neighboring countries, uh, it's um, already reaching 10%. So there is a way to go up, and I'm sure that young consumers, they will continue like uh, those kinds of drinks.